Allow me to have a word of prayer, and we'll begin with uh, today's brief message. Lord, thank you so much for the children, for us older, uh, for us the adults. It really fills up our hearts when we hear their laughter, when we see their smiles, and when we see the joy that they have, Father, in being involved in things that are spiritual, in things that, Lord, lead them closer to you. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to minister to your little lambs. And, Father, as we interact with your word this morning, I pray that you would um, touch our hearts, all of us, because ultimately, Father, we are all your children. Thank you so much, Father, for the week. And as we bring this program to a close, please bless us with the revelation from your word that will touch our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, a mature herd of one is a sermon for this morning. There is, um, when I lived in South Dakota for almost three years, I got to see a lot of real buffaloes. Uh, drive, there was a park where you would drive through, and if you went in the spring, you would see a lot of buffalo calves. And man, those are, the, not the calves, the papa buffaloes. They are big Burly, it looks like they do push-ups when no one is looking because they're massive. They're, the hump was bigger than my car, um, so I will always yield. You may go, Mr. Buffalo. I can't wait. Um, but the little ones. Growth is imperative for the little buffaloes. You know why? Um, maybe not in the park, but in real life. Uh, baby deer, um, all the, the animals that are in the, when they are born, they're still babies, it is imperative that they grow for their survival. If they're not in the process of growing, they place themselves at high risk of predators. I want to show you a video um, that illustrates this, that being a baby is dangerous. This is a, a video that I saw many years ago in YouTube. Uh, it's called Battle at Kruger, and this is South Africa. And uh, an amateur videographer caught this, and National Geographic would have loved to have been there at this time, but nature does not allow you to, to stage these type of things. Here's a herd of buffaloes just moseying on, and if you can tell by the twigs, the wind is blowing towards the lions. So the buffalo herd cannot smell it, and he's, this is the lead bull, you know, the big mature ones, and they're this close, and they still haven't noticed the lions until now, when they're right upon them. But the lions, look, they're, they're bypassing the nice, big, juicy, meaty, mature buffalo. But who are they going after? The baby buffalo. Five lionesses, I mean, pouncing on top of a little buffalo. Being a little buffalo, a baby buffalo, is dangerous in the wild. And this little guy, um, he's going to get yanked out of the, of the, the lake. But another guy is going to join the, the frenzy of trying to have uh, buffalo for lunch. You may not be able to see him right now, but I don't know if you can see in the water something floating there with a big mouth and lots of teeth. It's an alligator. So you have five lionesses tugging at the little guy on one end, and now an alligator wanting to drag and have buffalo soup with the baby buffalo. And they're going to tug and tug, and I mean, this little guy ha is defenseless. He, does, he, still, he yet does not have horns. He does not have the muscle power to overpower the, the lionesses, definitely not the alligator. The alligator wants them to get him in the water, and who will win this tug of war will be the lionesses, of course. They have more in number. And now the lionesses think that they're going to have a lunch. We're going to come back to this little guy in just a bit. Um, being a baby, being newborn, is beautiful. They're cute. I have a one-year-old one at home. They're precious, but they're very vulnerable. Um, in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 and 16, uh, by the way, children, who is that in that picture? Who's, who's in, that, in that painting? Who is that? That's baby? Baby Jesus. Jesus came as a baby as well, but look what happened when Jesus came as a baby. Um, Rise, this is the angel warning Mary and Joseph, telling them, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to do what to Jesus? Destroy him. And then in verse 16 says, Then Herod became furious because they had escaped, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem 
and in all that region who were two years old or under. For the survival of babies, growth is imperative. And in the, gospel, in the Gospels, we find that Jesus himself, being born a baby, he was at risk of being already persecuted, even as a child. In Luke chapter 2, verses 40, and then 52, we read these, these very applicable passages for us as a church. Luke chapter 2, verses 40 and 52 reads as follows. The child continued to do what? To grow and become strong, increasing in wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Jesus was born as a baby, but baby Jesus grew. And he left us for us an example of what it takes for us to survive as Christians on this wilderness. Because Hadassah read, read that we need to be careful because the adversary is roaming around like a roaring what? Seeking who he may eat. <laughs> I like that version. He's looking for someone to eat. <laughs> He wants to make lunch out of us, just like those five lionesses pounce on that baby buffalo. With that much reality and tenacity and persistence, the enemy has his eye on you and me, but especially on who? The little ones. Praise the Lord for churches that invest on VVS and other programs that try to create a barrier, a fence for the children. Because in this world, I mean, the, the tobacco industry had to be put to a stop legally because there were many things that they were doing to try to reach six- and seven-year-olds. This is in this country. The same for the alcohol industry, seeking to expose children and, and take away the, 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 the fear and, and become, having them become familiar with things that will, will harm them. That's why we have so many teenagers um, when I worked my first, summer, my first summer job at a community college, I was 16. All my peers who were 16-year-olds, all of them were smoking. How can that be? Because the industry wants to make addicts of our children from young. And that's just a, a very small example of how the world, the secular world, is so interested in destroying our lives from our youth. And the reality is that the more I look and the older I get, I am a father now. The reality is this, my friends. There is only one institution on this planet that sincerely cares and makes strides to try to protect children. You know what that institution is called? Church. It's the only one. Money has seduced even many governments in not protecting children as they should. Church should be a safe haven for our little, one, little ones. Amen? How did Jesus grow? That's the question we're going to explore for just a few minutes. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus says, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus grew because daily he partook of the word of God. That's number one. Number two, how did Jesus grow? Matthew 26, 53 reads, do you not think that I can appeal to my Father and he will at once send, more, send me more than 12 legions of angels? Jesus had the constant conscious conviction, my Father protects me. I am safe. Nothing happens to me without him allowing it. Jesus could grow because in his day-to-day -day walk, he felt the security of the Father's protection. Number three, how did Jesus grow? John 26, 32, 16, 32 reads, You will be scattered, talking to his disciples, each to his own, and, I, and you will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. One of the greatest plagues that, that is, is um, affecting humanity, and I think with all this pseudo-technological um, social networking that, that they're not bad in itself, but many people become so isolated with it that we lose touch with what really fills our hearts, real, tangible, human contact. 
Nothing can replace real, tangible human contact. I can hug, I cannot hug any of my friends in Facebook. It would be silly to be cut only with my laptop or my iPad. I can find out about them, and I'm happy to have reconnected with many of my friends from high school, my, my youth. Praise the Lord for, I enjoy Facebook for that. But I know Facebook will never replace true, tangible, face-to-face -face friendship. People crave it. Jesus, he could grow because he never experienced loneliness, not even for, well, if we want to be technical, today in Sabbath school, we learned that there was one day where Jesus did not feel the presence of his Father. But he went through that experience for you and me so that we would never, ever have to experience a separation between God. And that was the day he hung on the cross where he would scream, Father, oh, Eloi, Eli, Eli, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? But that was one day, and that was a specific day. It was not the usual. Jesus day to day felt the Father's presence with him. Thus he could grow. And the last one, how did Jesus grow? Matthew 3, 17. This is the Father now speaking to Jesus, saying, This is my what? Beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The greatest contributor to the growth of Jesus is that he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, he was loved. He was loved. I remember when I took um, abnormal psych during my nursing rotation, we had a picture of two, two uh, control groups with monkeys. In one picture was a wire frame um, with a milk bottle hanging from it, and then kind of like a metallic face of a monkey. And then on the other side was the same frame but with a cloth, a soft uh, cloth put over it and a friendly face on top of it. The baby monkeys would go feed here, but run right back here. And if they had to choose between feeling loved and warmth over food, you know what they would choose? We crave being loved above all things. Jesus could grow because every day of his life he knew Beyond a shadow of a doubt, he was loved. So Jesus could grow because he was fed properly, he was kept safe, he was not alone, and he was loved. John chapter 3, verse 3, by the way, that's not my little girl, that's not Gianna, that's my little niece, my youngest one. This is before um, Gianna was born. Um, this is her about a couple of hours uh, after she was born. This is uh, um, Brianna the youngest one of my brother. In John chapter 3, verse 3, we read, unless one is what? He cannot see the kingdom of God. So it, as far as believers are concerned, we all start out our journey as what? Babies. And because we all start out our journey as babies, it is imperative that we experience what then in order to survive? Growth. We have to grow. Those four components that allow Jesus to grow have to be an experience in my life because it is imperative for me as a Christian, for me also like Jesus, to increase, to grow. Now, we're going to apply those four components that Jesus had into our own experience. What does the Bible say Christians? If Jesus grew this way, how do Christians grow? Well, baby Christians need to eat properly in order to grow. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says the following. Like newborn what? Babies long for the pure milk of the? Jesus grew because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. The same way that Jesus grew is the same way that you and I grow. By the? The word. Um, I, I, when I started my Christian journey, many people gave me tons of DVDs, tons of books, and I wish they were nice. They, were, they wanted to help me, but I wish they wouldn't have given me so much <laughs> to read because in trying to watch this and read that, I was not. And this is the pure milk that causes spiritual babies to grow. 
Now, um, the second way that, that um, babies grow, they not, not only need to eat properly, they also need protection. Now, you're going to meet my older brother, my younger brother, sorry. Um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 reads as follows. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Now, when Paul speaks about you who are spiritual, that is just inferring you who have grown to a certain level of spiritual maturity in which you can care for someone else. The church needs, the church needs spiritually mature Christians. Just like a herd needs the, the burly mature buffaloes, the church needs presently mature Christians in it. Now, we need both. The herd needs the baby buffaloes because that ensures the, the, the um, survival of the herd for the future. But presently, the herd needs mature buffaloes. And the church presently needs people that are spiritual, that are connected with the Lord, that have a thriving, growing experience. Um, does this mean that the church needs perfect people? No. The church needs growing people. Amen? Because growing people will always remain humble. They will remember that they are not what they used to, but they are not yet what they ought to be. Amen? And that is a spiritual person. Not one that says, I have arrived. Watch out for those. There are lions with buffalo, with a buffalo coat and little horns. And the horns are not for the herd. The horns are for the lions. Amen? They're not for, for the, they will not be to be hurting each other here. Spiritual babies need to grow. They need protection. They need to know that the church will care for them. They need to know that they are not alone. Um, and I'll speak, I'll speak as friends. I've, I've church planted and I've, and I've pastored little churches. And I've had the privilege of pastoring a large church. They're both good. They both have their strengths. But one of the things that I, I have to caution us, we, we, we can say pretty safely that we are a large church. We've been blessed. Amen? But some of the cautions that come with a large church is we cannot let people get lost in the crowd. One of the, the, the things that large churches have to watch out for is that they do not lose their personal ability, being personable, meaning you are just a strange face that I see every once in a while. And though we may worship in the same church for 10 years, I still don't know your name. I have been to large churches where we've met for, for midweek meeting, and I say, what's the name of this individual? And I don't know, I see you every Saturday. You sit on that pew over there. <laughs> but I don't know you. How can that be? We have to make sure that as a church, no one here feels alone. If there's one place where a human should not feel alone is in God's house, in his church. Because they will look for alternatives. Satan has his pseudo-churches. Pseudo Many of my friends that complain about being lonely in church, no one talks to me, no one reaches out to me, it's only like for an hour in the morning, but during the week it's so alone. And mo most of them were new converts. They did not know people in the church. Many of my friends that were in, those, in, the, in that world in Columbus, Ohio, they felt such a strong temptation to go back to the bar, not for the alcohol. You know why? Companionship. People knew who they were at the bar, but they walked as strangers into the church. But not in Oakwood, amen? Not here. Not here. By God's grace, not here. Not, the, the fourth one. Oh, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says the following. That's my three uh, nieces, uh, Ariana, Danny, and, and, Bri, and Bibi, Brianna. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking what? The assembling of ourselves together. Why, Paul? 
so much the more as you see the day approaching. Which, which day is that? Tax day, April 15, which day, which day is this? The second coming of Jesus. As we near that awesome great day, should we neglect assembling ourselves together? Why? I was never taught this. Just like you tell me, you've watched Discovery Channel enough. Let's, let's extract some knowledge from the Discovery, Net, the Discovery Channel. What will happen to, here's the herd of buffaloes, and I'm a buffalo. What happens to me if I decide to go solo at it in the Serengeti? Sausage, buffalo bacon, buffalo burgers. That's what I will become pretty soon. The lions look for the, str the stragglers, those that wander too far away from the herd. Just as the herd is essential for survival in the wilderness, so the church for survival in this world. The church is not optional. Assembling of ourselves together is not optional. Many people feel like they can be good Christians at home. Well, can this buffalo survive by himself apart from the herd? And I see it time and time and time again, even before I was a pastor. How did I get pulled out of the, into the world? I stopped assembling myself with the church. I became an easy target. That's why we were going in this sequence. Because... People will want to be part of the, the herd, the church, when the church knows them, cares for them, and they are not alone here. They will discover that nothing can replace what they have in church. No matter how alluring, how, many, how, how attractive the world may seem to them, they will compare to what God offers to them through his church, and they'll say the church surpasses them all. I find food, spiritual nutrition. I find protection. Just like the little brother who calls his older brother, I have older brothers in this church that when I am in trouble, I can call and I know they will pick up. And I know that they will do something to help me because I'll know that I am not alone. We need to close. Um, we have one more verse. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we are to surround ourselves. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before you, before us. One last point. I say this, I say this with all my heart. I enjoy, I enjoy worshiping. I enjoy this part thoroughly. But let me share this from my heart, beloved. Sabbath morning is not enough to call ourselves a community. If all we have is Sabbath morning, we will remain strangers. Because, just think about it, how much talking can you do between that door and your car? There's really not that much. That's why I, I'm hoping that you will decide and stay and eat with us. I like to eat, and I like to talk. Do you? There you go, we're, we're made for each other. Not just you and me, each other. All of you said, I like to talk and I like to eat. What better place to do that than in God's house? Let us not stay strangers. Let us become brothers and sisters. Not just friends. Older brothers, little brothers. Big sisters, little sisters. Let us surround ourselves with a cloud of witnesses. Spiritual babies need to grow. They need to eat properly. They need protection. And I went too fast. They need protection. They need to know they are not alone. They need to know. This is the last part, and it's so crucial. They need to know that they are loved. 1 Peter 4.8 reads as follows. It's a powerful passage. By the way, my, my sister-in-law took that picture. I love it. But when they wake up, <laughs> it's different. <laughs> 1 Peter 4, they, they still love each other, but you know children, right? That's the reality, till they, they get converted. 1 Peter 4, 8. And above all things, above all things, above all things, above all, above all things, have what? Fervent love for one another. Have fervent love for one another because love will cover what? Now, this last phrase right here, 
Love will cover a multitude of sins. It's not what we sometimes think. This kind of love is not the kind of love that says, you want to do something bad? Okay, let me look this way. Tell me when you're done. You done? Okay, I'll look at you again. Love does not cover the way we think cover. But we need to interpret the Bible by using the Bible. That's why I put James. First Peter 4, 8, Paul admonishes us, appeals to us, begs us, brethren, above all things, have fervent love. Because this fervent love will cover a multitude of sins. But what does that phrase, it covers a multitude of sins, means? We find that answer in James chapter 5, verses 19 through 20. It says this, brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, begins to leave the herd, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save a soul from death and do what? Cover a multitude of sins. Love is not talk. Love is do. Fervent love does. Romantic love talks. I love you. I'll bring you the moon. <laughs> but real love does the dishes. Real love vacuums. Real love folds the laundry. Amen? <laughs> no, shh. <laughs> Repent. <laughs> Let us not have romantic love. When Peter says fervent, that word fervent comes from the word uh, fiebre, which means fever. Love that warms us up. It matters. It will matter to us. It will matter to us when someone begins to stop missing church. It will matter to us when a pew is empty. Not to gossip, not to wonder. I wonder why. That's romantic love. It just talks. But fervent love will say, so-and-so is not here. How can I get that person's phone number? I will contact that person today. I will visit that person today because if someone begins to wander from the truth and someone goes back and restores such a one back into the herd, back into the church, where it is essential for us to grow unto salvation, so anyone that does that saves a soul from death and covers a multitude of sins. That is the biblical definition of what fervent love is. And when all four of these, of these pillars are there, a community where children are safe and grow into mature Christians will be present as well. Do we want to have protection for our children? I don't watch the news because every time I watch it, I look at my little girl and think, Lord Jesus, come soon. I don't want my little girl to be a teenager in the world that we live in. It scares me. And it scares me when I went through BBS and I see all these precious little ones, all these valuable little ones, and I think BBS ends in one day. What will these little ones be doing on Monday when there is no more BVS? Where will these little girls, these little boys be doing for the rest of the summer? And what will the church do? Sabbath mornings is not enough. There's a high calling for us as a church beyond just talking but doing. Spiritual babies are beautiful, aren't they? My baby girl is precious. And they need to eat properly to grow. They need protection to, to grow. They need to know that they are not alone. They need to know that they are loved. The church's greatest need presently is to have mature Christians right now. Christians that are looking back and saying, I've been a Christian for 10 years. Have I grown? Am I still in the same place I was 10 years ago? Have I grown? 
My little girl fights with me, with me when I feed her. She wants to take control of the spoon. She sees mommy and daddy, we eat, no one's feeding us. We're feeding ourselves. And she's like, I don't want to be a baby anymore. And she'll do a little Picasso on her face. She wants to grow up. And another older she, she gets, she'll want to do grown-up things. My friend, heaven awaits for us to say, I too want to grow. If babies want to grow, if teenagers, I mean, they're counting, I can't wait till I'm 16 and I can drive. I can't wait till I'm 18, till I'm 21. If they want to grow up, shouldn't 30-year-olds also want to grow up? I know we don't want to get old, but spiritually speaking, that we're, we're looking at eternity. So don't worry about the years. Worry about being a mature Christian. We left this little guy about to be eaten by the lionesses. And the reason this video went viral is not because of what we've just seen. There are tons, thousands of videos likewise of a herd having a little buffalo snatched from the herd and being mauled by lions and the herd continues. Oh well, he wasn't fast enough. Oh well, where was the mama? Where's that buffalo's mama? We're ca herds casting blame. Casting blame. But this herd comes back. This herd, the, buff the lionesses are saying, excuse me, this is not part of the script. And the, the buffaloes are saying, we don't run by your script. Something happened in the brains of all these buffaloes. And they came back, and right now probably they're thinking, all right, whose great idea was this? What do we do now? I don't know, Bob. You go. No, you go. You go. No, you go. You, it was your idea. No, you go. Finally, I call him Bubba. Bubba the buffalo. Boom. Right there. That's Bubba the buffalo. Hey, Bubba, look what you did. What? It worked. They're afraid of us. Ha, 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 ha. Take that, you big bully. Hey, fellas, look at that. I made a lion run. Isn't that cool? You guys should try it. No, Bubba, only you can do that. We're your regular buffaloes. No, guys, try it. You try it. No, you try it. No, you try it. Come on, guys, we're right there. Right there, the lionesses are roaring, but they're not biting. Someone please do something. Bubba comes again. Boom. That's how you do it. Chase the lions. They're afraid of us. Yeah, chase the lions. Let's show them who's boss. Oh, wait a second. Our mission is not to chase lions. Save the baby. That's right. This herd gets distracted so easily. Save the baby. That's right. It was about, sa about saving the baby, not chasing lions. All right, here we are. Only three lions is left. Let's get closer. Let's unite. Let's press together. Press together. The baby's still alive. There is still hope. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Get up, baby. Get up, baby. Join the herd again, baby. You're safe. The herd came back for you. The herd did not abandon you. The herd stepped up to the challenge. The herd did not walk away from you. The herd had fervent love for you. That when Satan, who roars about like a roaring lion, the church did not forget about you. What kind of a herd do we want to be? The typical standard, walk away and make excuses? Or the one that repents and goes back and does things right? What kind of a church do you want? Oh, good, I cannot make you. I am one person. I can only decide what I am going to be. What will you be today? Our church needs spiritual, mature people. And the Holy Spirit is calling all of us that have been at this for some time to finally step up to the plate for the sake of our little ones. They need us, and we need it. Please remember this. A herd of one. If a herd cares about one, it cares about all. If a herd does not care about one, it does not care about none. It's all about saving my own skin. 
and we can call each other community all we want, but that definition that it's all about saving my own skin negates anything remotely close to being a community. Do we want to be a church community? Do we want to be a part of a herd that goes back for the babies? Every believer needs to belong to and be a part of the church. Church is not optional. I cannot be spiritual by myself in my house, week after week, month after month. I will get snatched away. It's just a matter of time. Church is not optional. Every believer needs to belong to and be a part of a church. Every church needs to care for its members. If it does not care for one, it does not care for none. Every member of a church should seek to grow and become a mature member. The survival of the church depends on this. In your bulletins, you saw something like this. Please take it out at this time. In your bulletins, you probably saw this little card. I don't know if you took time to read through it. But I would like for us to consider what we have heard. If you don't have a bulletin near you, just in the bulletin itself, there's a back part that says sermon notes. You can write down there some of the responses. But in this card, there are four appeals that I would like for you to consider. I can't make you, but I can certainly plead with you. Please respond. Number one says, I desire to be born again. I would like to receive Bible instructions on how to begin my spiritual journey. Of course, this is for those of us that have never really understood or made a decision. This is an opportunity that heaven is granting you to experience the spiritual life. And as a representative of this church, I invite you to be part of this herd, part of this church family. Number two says, I desire to commit my life to the Lord through baptism. I do not want to put off this important decision. Please contact me. The third one says, I desire to grow to be a mature spiritual Christian. I would like to be taught how to feed myself spiritually from the word. The fourth one says, I desire to be a fully mature Christian. I want to learn how to be able to protect and defend those young in the faith and lead others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We have the whole spectrum. Do we want to start as babies? Do we want to grow? Do I want to be mature? The last one simply says, I would like a personal visit by the pastor, the elders, or deacons. If you have filled out any or more than one, of these. Please put your name, phone number, and email. When we leave after the church service, we'll have deacons with a plate. You can fold this, make it private, personal, however you want, and just drop it in that plate. In the meantime, this church is praying for you. We care. Oakwood cares. We don't want to be a church where no one cares about no one except themselves. We want to be a herd of one. We want to be a church of one, a church where one matters. Lord Jesus, thank you for stirring our hearts through a herd of buffaloes. Thank you that that day that gentleman took that video. Many people saw it for the novelty it was. But it spoke to my heart, Lord. How can animals care like this and yet humans not? Especially those who claim to be believers. Lord Jesus, we need your Holy Spirit. Help us to be honest, to be transparent. We have an opportunity, Lord, to break through the monotony. To break through, Lord, our own spiritual journey to reach the levels that you desire us to have, the maturity, the spiritual fortitude. Thank you for loving us. We ask for the Holy Spirit to be poured upon our church, everyone here present. Make us, Lord, make us 
into a church of one. In Jesus' name, amen.